Welcome to winter in Canada, or should I say spring? Because it's, yeah, March now, end of March to be exact. My friends over at ASU sent me their brand new camera, the P1 Max, 4K, Ultra HD, built-in solar panel, all at an affordable price. It also has some really cool theft protection and vehicle protection features. We're gonna be going over a little bit later in this video. But I know there's only one question you guys really wanna know the answer to. Is this good? Or bad tech? I make weekly videos helping consumers like you pick through the blow to tech market to find products that actually work. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna support the channel, hit the subscribe button right down below. The P1 Max is a 4K Ultra HD camera with up to a 6x optical zoom. It has full color night vision that can be viewed in two different ways we're going to talk about a little bit later in the video. Equipped with audio, there is both a built-in microphone and speaker for two-way communication. So let's take a look at what comes in the box because there's really not much you need to get started. Inside you have a USB-C charging cable, the mount and the screws you need, which is only a total of four. One little downside I noticed is I don't see a placement sticker. I could be missing it, but typically they come with one just to make it a little bit easier to set up. You get an instruction manual and then the complete full unit. They went with a wide design for this unit. So instead of like Yuffie's S3, where it kind of stacks on top of itself a little bit, this thing is long with a pretty big solar panel built on top of it. In theory, this should give it more surface area, which means it takes in more power. And because of the long design, I think it gives you a bit more options of where you can set it up. On the bottom, it has a weatherproof seal, which you can flip up for USB-C charging a micro SD port equipped it up to 128 gigabits max and a reset and on switch you'll need in order to get started. In terms of the build quality, I'm not overly impressed, but I wasn't either with their other camera. I have one rule I like to follow with these cameras. I can deal with cheaper build quality that feels like if I drop it from five feet, it's gonna break into pieces. If, if, this is an if right here, it actually does what it say it's going to do and it does it well. So if it keeps my home secure, use cheap plastic, I'm okay with that. Because it has a built-in solar panel on top of the unit, this obviously saves more setup time. Some of these devices come with an external one, so now you're screwing two devices in instead of the single one. The setup is super easy. The biggest thing I would say you have to think of is, is your roof going to cover the unit at all? This will obviously affect the amount of sun that it's getting, which will affect its charging cycle. According to the brand, it requires at least two hours of sunlight per day, and that will keep it charged all year round so you never have to take it down. Other than that, I found a good spot for my mount, put in the screws, twisted on the unit, looked for the perfect angle, and that was it for the physical setup portion. After that, just head to the Amazon or Android App Store, install their official application, set up an account using your email, and then follow the on-screen prompts to connect your device. This just involves scanning a QR code, connecting to Wi-Fi, and that's it. A very comparable camera on the market to this is Eufy's S3 Pro. Now, one thing I really like about this one compared to that more, probably a more premium camera, you don't need a home base for this. Because of that micro SD slot, you get two different options for storage. You can either fork out for their cloud storage, which I would never suggest, or just put in a 128 gigabyte micro SD. I do wish they would have allowed for a little bit more storage. 256 would have been quite a bit better, but it does offer loop recording, which means the older footage is going to disappear over time. And of course, if you already have their home base, it's pretty easy to be set up with that as well. No surprise here, but one big feature that they advertise on this camera is AI. It seems like every company needs to label AI on their device, no matter what it is. I'm pretty confident the next bidet I buy for my toilet is going to have AI built in that tells me I need to wipe or clean it more. So because this is a major claim they put on their product, I really wanted to put these features to the test. For test number one, I wanted to try out the pet and human detection, and this can be adjusted directly through their settings AI menu. If you have your camera set up in your backyard and you don't want your dog to constantly send you notifications, well, you can adjust and turn off that setting. So I started with just the pet setting on, so it should only detect my dog. And after letting my dog out in the backyard and allowing her to run around, I did start to receive notifications that were listed as pets. Going back in the settings and putting it on humans only, 
I wanted to see if the camera would detect my dog at all with me in the frame. I didn't receive any notifications of her running around, but as soon as I got in the frame, a notification popped up saying someone was lingering around. So it seems like this feature was a success and works pretty well. Test number two, I wanted to try out one of the more unique AI surveillance features, which is fence detection. You can set a border up around your fence. Actually, you can set multiple of them up. And theoretically, anytime somebody jumps it, your alarm should go off. If you have it on smart alarm, it will only turn the light on at night and during the day, it will just set off the alarm. The alarm can be set as a sound or also a message if you prefer. Look at the kind of stuff I do for you guys for a video. I'm out here tracking through the snow, about to jump my own fence. <sighs> I don't think I realized how tall my fence was. And yeah, that's me struggling to jump my back fence where I had that little trigger area set up. And unfortunately, I just could not get it to trigger. I even went back up to the fence and tried climbing it from the front and it just didn't activate. I did want to give this feature one more chance. So I put it to my front facing fence a little bit closer and I did it during the day just to see if it would affect it at all. Luckily this time I utilized the step ladder so I didn't have to struggle jumping over it. And this time it was a success. It did actually work. The alarm is decently loud, but it doesn't stay on for that long. I don't think this is too big of a deal because it's really only meant as a deterrent. Hopefully somebody jumps over, oh, I'm being watched, and runs away. Test number three, I wanted to try out the vehicle protection. Just like your fence, you can set up a border around your vehicle and have it set to certain times of the day, or it can protect it 24 seven. If someone sketchy comes up to your car, you can have it say a message, and that way they hopefully just, again, run away. I tried this first with the camera set up front facing, and going up to my vehicle, I just could not have any success. I tried opening doors, I tried lingering around, I tried coming up from the back, and the alarm just would not go off. So I thought maybe, okay, it has to be from a side angle where it can get more surface area of the vehicle. Set up a new exclusion zone, went back out, tried to test it, still no luck. I even tried the auto feature where it just sets up its own area around your vehicle and I still didn't have any success. Now I could just blame this on the major snowstorm we've gone over the last few days. Yes, at the end of March, it's crazy how much snow we have. But regardless of the amount of snow, this AI technology should be able to detect the vehicle and it sure as hell should be able to detect me going up to it. Unfortunately, this one was a bit of a fail. For test number four, I wanted to try out the intrusion zones. Now, this is just where you can set up any zone, and anytime a person comes into that area, an alarm will go off, a message will go off, whatever you have it set to. So if you really don't want people going up to your front door at night, this could be pretty useful. So I just set up a big one right in my front yard, went outside, and... Warning, you have entered a high-definition surveillance area. Yeah, success. A super obnoxiously loud message went off, and I think anybody that's not supposed to be there would be gone after hearing this. Overall, I give the AI surveillance a six out of 10. I think it works for very basic tasks, but it almost seems like they have too many things going on here. I would rather them have a few features that work really well than try to do five, six, seven, eight different AI surveillance features. And in this case, the vehicle protection just couldn't work at all. And if it does work, and I believe that they have had it working or else they wouldn't put it in there, they should offer some troubleshooting steps and some tips to get this setup working better. So let's talk video quality. Because you're buying a 4K camera, you want it to be clear and vivid. And I have to say, I think the footage stands up pretty good. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different footage here. Some of my front yard, people walking by, snow falling, and then some of my backyard of my dog and me playing, running around. And you can see the detail is actually pretty vivid. Also, if you want footage that isn't gonna take up as much storage, you can switch it between UHD and SD. Here's a little comparison showing you the Ultra HD compared to the SD. And yeah, you can definitely tell a difference, but the SD still looks pretty clear. And if you don't wanna use up a lot of data and let's say you don't wanna use up too much storage, then it's a pretty good option. The two-way communication works pretty good with the built-in microphone and speaker. Now it does have a bit of a delay, but this is pretty normal with cameras like this. The speaker quality is okay and pretty loud. And that goes the same with the microphone. You can understand what they're saying and that's really all I care about with these cameras. Make sure to subscribe on Bad Tech because I keep losing money from these videos. So let's talk night vision, because there's three different ways you can have it set. With black and white night vision, the infrared is turned on, and it looks 
okay. But if I had an intruder coming into my yard, I probably wouldn't want this setting to be activated because I want that full color night vision where you can see them clear as day. The other setting is color night vision, where when somebody comes into the frame, the color night vision is activated, but when there's no detection, it goes back to black and white. And this looks pretty clear. You can see people's faces, you can see someone coming into the yard, and yeah, honestly, this the night vision on this is pretty good. This camera does have an aperture of 1.6, which helps quite a bit with low light environments. And again, you can really tell that this thing works well at night. And one of the things I really like about this device is the way the ring light is built in, which goes all the way around the camera and the sensor. It gets pretty bright and it helps a lot at night, especially if you have it set onto detection. Somebody comes into the frame, the camera activates, and now you get this beautiful full color night vision that honestly really stands out with this device. Now, one thing I did notice throughout my testing is the stuttering and the audio not being in sync. So here's one scene I tried to film testing out the night vision and yeah, check this out. You can just see how out of sync the audio is. Out the ring light a little bit, but it's still a pretty good example of how things look. Now let's go ahead and try it. Let's turn on this illumination here. And here it is. And you see that illumination really makes a big difference. It's actually a pretty powerful spotlight to have on something like this. Now this is another thing. Maybe it's just the machine getting too cold, but this is IP65 and it should easily be able to work in the minus two Celsius I have out now. Now, by no means has this made the camera unusable. This only happened from time to time, so I'm not really sure what triggers this. It could potentially just be a weak internet connection, although I don't think that's likely since my router is so close to where it was set up. The P1 Max is also fully compatible with Alexa and Google, so if that's what your smart home is already running, these just slide right in and connect to your system. Let's talk price, because this is always a definitive issue on whether I call this good or bad tech. Is the price matching the features and the competition that already exists in the market? The P1 Max goes regular price 150 USD, but is constantly on sale. And for the spring sale right now, it's 120. Like always, I include any coupon codes down below, plus the link to the product in the description and pinned in the comments. I think one of the most comparable devices to this is the Eufy S3, which will run you around $200. So about a 30 to 40% premium. I love that this company is really trying to create affordable solar cameras because they have become so useful and easy to set up so anybody at any income can have a good home security system. However, in this case, I think some of the AI features are a bit of a dud, like trying to advertise this as some crazy AI surveillance and really putting those features out there when they just work okay, isn't necessarily the best in this case. With that being said, I love the video quality. I love the solar charging. I love the design and I love the price point. I don't love some of the video stuttering and potential FPS issues as much. So with all that being said, this is good tech, but barely. For myself, I would go out and get the more premium product instead of this. But if this is where your price point is and you need to get something where you don't have to connect a home base and you want it to be reliable, it's going to do the job. I think when you look at other solar cameras in this price point, it's probably one of the better options. Overall, I like ASU a lot. I don't know if I, I said that right, OSU, ASU. I, I like their products a lot. I kind of think of them as like a discounted Eufy, which is a good thing. It's a place in the market that a company needs to take. And hopefully some of those AI features can be updated in the future to get working even better. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.